Hi everyone, I'm here today to make a video of my Barnes & Noble Leather Bound Classics Edition. On my graduation book haul video, Vienna commented and asked me if I would make this video because outside of the US, uh, they don't... I'm pretty sure there are no Barnes & Noble stores outside of the US, so if you don't live in the US and you want some of these beautiful Leather Bound Classics editions, you can't really go and look in the bookstore, so you don't know what the inside looks like, so she was asking me if I could show the inside of all of my Barnes & Noble Leather Bound Classics and talk about if the font is too small or too this or too that, and then what they look like inside based on pictures or whatever else, so that people who don't live in the US or people who do and this is helpful for them too for ordering online can look at this and hopefully help you decide if you want to get any of these. So let's get started. I have 15 Barnes & Noble Leather Bound Classics editions and I love them. They're absolutely gorgeous and so I will be starting with the first one that I got. This is Bullfinch's Mythology. It is a beautiful, beautiful edition. The front looks like this, the spine, and the back. On the back there it says the Age of Fable, the Age of Chivalry, and the Legends of Charlemagne. The inside cover looks like this. And the inside back cover looks like this. The edges are gilded in gold. And the contents have three sections as seen on the back. I don't know if you can see it. The Age of Fable, the Age of Chivalry, and the Legends of Charlemagne. Then right after the contents it has this to introduce the section of the Age of Fable. And then it starts off here. There's this image and then the Age of Fable or Stories of Gods and Heroes preface. So that's what it looks like. So the writing is kind of small. I'm not sure if this is showing up very well, but for me it's a size that I can enjoyably read it. Um, I don't know, there's another example, I don't know for other people, but for me it's not too small. I think it's comfortable to read, but you know, some people might find it too small, but I enjoy it. And since I love mythology, I really, really love this edition. Okay, I should probably speed it up so this video is not really long. I have Hans Christian Andersen Classic Fairy Tales. The cover looks like this. The spine in the back. It's gilded in gold. This is what the inside cover looks like. The back inside cover is the same. I, when I was getting this, there is one edition that says the complete fairy tales and one that says classic fairy tales, but they have the same number of pages, so I believe that they are both the complete fairy tales of Hans Christian Andersen, even though this one doesn't say complete on it, I believe that it is the complete version. So inside here, the font is larger than the last one I showed you. It's definitely a nice size. You can see what the headings look like on the chapters. There's these engravings inside of it. You can see more engravings. And in addition to the engravings, there are some larger images like that that I find very beautiful. Here's another example. So this has engravings and images inside of it. I find the text to be a very nice size and I really enjoy this book. Another one that looks like that is Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales. It has the same sort of look as Anderson's fairy tales. It has this beautiful gold on the front and that's the spine which is gorgeous and then the back. It's gilded in gold on the edges and the inside cover looks like this and the back inside cover is the same. It has the contents and in addition to the contents it has a list of the illustrations inside uh, which goes on for quite a few pages so it's sh obviously there are a lot of illustrations in here then there's this introduction it says about the Grimm's about the stories 
And then it starts here. This is the first one, the Frog King. I find the font to be quite large and good to read. And you can see it has these little engravings like that. In addition to the engravings, it has larger images. There's an engraving. There's another page. So it has lots of illustrations and engravings in it, and this is the front, and I really enjoy this. Next I have Aesop's Illustrated Fables. The cover's gorgeous. You can see there's gold on the lion and a lot of the animals. Then here is the spine, the lion's there, and some of the others. And then the back says, slow and steady wins the race from the tortoise and the hare. And you can see a lot of the other symbols and animals and stuff from the different fables and it's gilded in gold. And the inside cover looks like this. I think the inside back cover is also the same. And this edition is beautifully illustrated. Almost, I'm pretty sure every single page almost has illustrations. There are engravings and then also drawings. So it starts off here, the fables. So you can see how they have beautiful illustrations like that. The font is enormous in, the, in this, so very large font. This is very readable. You can see another example. There's some large full page engravings in addition to the smaller ones. So there's lots of beautiful images. The fables are like this. They have a teal title. Then they have in large font, double spaced, the fable. Some of them are longer, some of them are three or four lines long only. And then beneath the fable, it has in teal italics the moral of the story. So in this case, for the sow and the wolf, the moral is services from strangers are to be suspected. <laughs> so that is basically the layout of the inside of this. And if you have any questions, let me know. Then I have Fairy Tales from Around the World by Andrew Lang. Now, Andrew Lang, I believe somewhere around 1900, collected a series of books of fairy tales from around the world, and he titled them in different colors. Sorry, here, that's the cover. Let me show the outside. Okay, so that's the cover. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's this dark pinkish, light reddish sort of color. And then that's the spine. It's beautiful and then the back and it says once upon a time there and it's gilded in gold the inside cover looks like that so basically Andrew Lang wrote a uh, collected he collected a series of fairy tales from around the world into different books and he made the books different colors so basically there's the blue fairy book the red fairy book the green fairy book the yellow fairy book, the pink fairy book, and then gray, violet, crimson, brown, orange, olive, and lilac. And in this Barnes & Noble Other Round Classics edition, there are collected several of each, several fairy tales from each of the books into this. So it is not all of his collected ones, but it's several fairy tales from each of the colored books in the collection. And I started reading some of these and they're really, really good and really interesting. Um, the first one in here is from the Blue Fairy Book, East of the Sun and West of the Moon, and that's a really interesting fairy tale. I'd actually read a book called East by Edith Patow, which is based off this, this fairy tale, the first one in here, and I find it incredibly interesting because I had not read the original fairy tale. But anyway, back to showing the inside, because that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> um, so you can see it has beautiful engravings inside of it. The font is quite large, I find. From, I mean, for me, it's plenty large. Um, but, uh, yeah, it looks smaller when I show it on the screen, but it's not that small. Um, it isn't as huge as the Aesop's Fables. That one's huge. But I'd say it's about the same size as the Grimm's and the Andersons. Um, but some pages don't have engravings and some pages do. 
Some pages have large engravings. I don't believe there are any color illustrations in here, but it does have beautiful engravings. All right, so that was the first five, and let me move these over. So we're a third of the way done. Okay. I also have a treasury of classic poetry. This is the Barnes & Noble Other Round Classics Edition, of course. And the back is like that, gilded in gold. The inside cover is uh, this marbled pattern. I'm not sure if online it says every single poet that is in this. There are a lot of them, but I'll name off some. Sir Thomas Wyatt, Sir Philip Sidney, Edmund Spencer, Christopher Marlowe. It has Shakespeare's sonnets, John Donne, Ben Jonson, Robert Herrick, Andrew Marvel, George Herbert, Richard Crashaw, you know, tons of them, Milton, Pope, um, Burns, Blake, tons of Blake from both Songs of Innocence and Songs of Experience, uh, William Wordsworth, um, Lord Byron, John Keats, Emerson, Poe, Longfellow, Whitman, Dickinson, Tennyson, basically just tons of classic poetry. Robert Frost, of course. I'm not going to take the time to list off all of the poets in here, but if any of you guys are interested in which poems or poets are in here, please write a comment and I'll be sure to let you know. I also have this beautiful edition of some of Plato's dialogues, The Republic and Other Dialogues. There's the cover, the spine, and the back. It's gilded in gold. The inside cover is simple, but it matches the orange on the outside, or the bronze. The contents is here. It has The Republic, Symposium, Phaedrus, Euthro, I probably butchered those names, Apology, Crito, and Fido. It says, a note on the text, the introductory text and translations used in this volume are taken from the third revised and corrected edition of Benjamin Jowett's The Dialogues of Plato, Macmillan, 1892. The text has been Americanized, phrases appear in brackets, so that's the foreword. Then it has an introduction. Haven't read this yet. I need to shorten this video, okay, look. So, <laughs> this is the font. I don't find it to be too small. For some reason when I show it on the video, it does appear smaller than it is, but I find it a very comfortable sized font. It's spaced out nicely, and I find it quite easy to read. I don't know what else to say, Plato. Then I have this beautiful, The Complete Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is the front. It has lots of little things woven into the design. You can even see a horse on carriage up there. It's very, very well designed. Then it has, you know, like the top hat, The Complete Sherlock Holmes, The Hound of the Baskervilles, a clock. And then the back is this beautiful design, and if you look at it carefully, there's lots of different uh, images woven into the design. It's gilded in gold. And the inside cover, of course. So this has basically every single thing he's written. There's an introduction, or, well, not, not every single thing he's written. Every Sherlock Holmes. The other stuff, um, I've read another one of his books, which is not Sherlock Holmes, but anyway. Uh, so it has A Study in Scarlet, The Sign of the Four, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, Return of Sherlock Holmes, The Hound of the Baskervilles, The Valley of Fear, uh, His Last Bow, and The Casebook of Sherlock Holmes. So all the Sherlock Holmes stuff written. And the introduction, I've read it and it's quite interesting because it talks about Sherlock Holmes. It, it starts off... There seems little need to introduce Sherlock Holmes or the 60 stories about him written by Arthur Conan Doyle between 1886 and 1927. So it basically talks about the influence of it. Everyone knows who Sherlock Holmes is. It's very good. The font is, for me, comfortable, but it is smaller than some of the other ones we've seen. Um, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> um, for me, it's quite comfortable to read. I've already read the first novel in this, and I think that the size of the font is fine, but I don't know if 
Some people might find it small. I think it's perfectly fine um, for me, but I don't know if you could see it. I'm trying to show the size of the font, but I think with the camera it's kind of hard to see, but hopefully that was helpful. Then I have the complete works of William Shakespeare. This is the cover, the spine, and the back. The inside is this beautiful marbling. It's gilded in gold. Now, this is a very large book. It has everything that Shakespeare wrote in it. And because of that, it does have small font. It also has two columns. So I'll show you. It has the plays and the poems. Now, this would be one where if someone is worried about font, this is one I would say exercise caution. For me, it's fine and I enjoy it and I like having all of his stuff in one book, but this is one where if I would caution you about any of the editions, this is the one where it does have small font. Clearly because all of Shakespeare is in one volume. So you can see it has two columns on each page and very small font, but, um, and it's not spaced out, it's close together. So. If you are worried about small font, this might be one that you want to stay away from. For me, I enjoy it and I can read it just fine and I like having all of his works in one, pe in one book. But if you were worried about font, then I might say try to find a different edition that has several volumes. That way they can space it out more. But I really enjoy this. And then I have the Jane Austen 7 novels. The cover is absolutely gorgeous, and the spine and the back. This is the inside cover, and the back inside is the same. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Okay, so this has Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Mansfield Park, Emma, Northanger Abbey, Persuasion, and Lady Susan. So that is inside contents. So. This is the one I know that you were specifically asking about. Um, it does have small font, but not as small as the Shakespeare. For me, I can read it just fine. Here's the introduction. So, I don't know if that helps. So, it does have small font. And for me, I, I can read it and enjoy it at this size. It's not tiny, tiny, um, but it is small. So. I don't know if this helps you at all, I'm trying to show, because I know you specifically asked about this one, but anyway, this does have small font, but for me, I can enjoy reading it, so um, I don't know, but if you are concerned about small font, then it could be too small. I know there are also some beautiful editions of this, these, um, the Penguin Clockbound Classics. Um, they have them bound in individual volumes, and I find those to be gorgeous, so if you did want to find an alternative to this. I think the Penguin Clockbound Classics are gorgeous and they have each of the novels bound separately. But I find the font of this to be fine to read, but if someone were to find it to be too small, then maybe the Penguins are a good alternative. All right, so that is five more and we have five left. So we're two thirds of the way done. Um, I hope this is helpful and let's keep going on the rest. So I have Jules Verne's seven novels. This is the cover and the spine and the back. The pages are gilded in gold. And the inside cover is a map. The seven novels contained in this are Five Weeks in a Balloon, A Journey to the Center of the Earth, From the Earth to the Moon, Round the Moon, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Around the World in 80 Days, and The Mysterious Island. The font in this one, I believe, is the same size as in Jane Austen. It is, sm oh, <laughs> it is small, mm, I think it might be larger than that, or maybe it's the same size, I'm not sure. It is small, but I find it to be quite easy to read, but if someone were to want it to be a little larger, then that's something. So I guess it just depends on your preference. For me, I don't mind reading it this small, but I, I find that since it's spaced out in between the lines, Maybe that helps it to be larger than it appears to be, or easier to read than it appears by the smallest of the font. But I, I find it to be 
quite easy to read that size of font, but if someone were to be concerned about small font, this one's comparable to the Jane Austen in terms of si um, size of font. The smallest one I have is the Shakespeare, which you saw has very little spacing between the lines and two columns, whereas the Jules Verne 7 novels and Jane Austen have smallish font but nice spacing between the lines and the font is larger and clearer than the Shakespeare. But I find this easy to read. It is a very fat book, so that's something if anyone was concerned about that. The rest of these, well, Jules Verne is early sci-fi because um, he wrote about things that at the time were not, um, so some of these are sci-fi books. Jules Verne wrote about things that at the time were not invented. He wrote 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea before submarines were feasibly invented, so I find that to be fascinating. So the rest of these, uh, I'll let this be the transition to the rest, which are all sci-fi. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Then I have The War of the Worlds and Other Novels by H.G. Wells. This is the cover, the spine, and the back. And it's gilded in silver, unlike some of the other editions. Now, the seven novels included in this are The Time Machine, The Island of Dr. Moreau, The Invisible Man, The War of the Worlds, The First Men in the Moon, The Food of the Gods, and In the Days of the Comet. The size of font, I think this is larger than the Austin or the Verne. It could be, I think it is larger, and it's spaced out. I find this quite comfortable to read. I mean, I guess in terms of general books, the font of these leather-bound classics is somewhat smaller, but I find that it's printed very clearly, and so that, um, that helps. I've read half of The War of the Worlds from this, and I find it to be quite easy to read, um, but I guess it depends. I think I showed it clearly enough, um, the font. I hope this is helpful. I know it's kind of hard to see with the camera. Three more! I have Douglas Adams' The Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So that's the cover, the spine, and the back. It says don't panic because on the cover of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in this book it says don't panic. Um, it is gilded in silver and the inside cover looks like that. Oh, this is the inside cover of The War of the Worlds and other novels. So the inside cover looks like this. And the ribbon is blue. I'm sorry, I forgot to show the ribbon on many of the other ones. The ribbon is dark blue. And the font of this is quite large compared to the other Leatherbound Classics edition. Very, very comfortable to read, nicely spaced out. I'd say about the size of font you would find in your average hardback book. And it's quite easy to read. Uh, this edition, The Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, combines the five books in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series, so all five books are in here. Those books are The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, The Restaurant to the End of the Universe, Life, the Universe, and Everything, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish, a short story called Young Zephod Plays It Safe, and the final book in the series, Mostly Harmless. It has a very nice introduction by Douglas Adams himself, and although I haven't read any of the books in here, I have read the introduction, and I can tell I'm really going to enjoy this book because um, he is hilarious and witty, and just his writing, even in the introduction, I found so entertaining. So it has some images here. I think you can see the font. It's quite clear. Um, that image at the front, I think, is the only image. But I really, really enjoyed the introduction, so I'm really looking forward to reading this. Hopefully this video is helpful. Two more! I have Dune by Frank Herbert. This is a beautiful edition, and I love the spine. And it is gilded in gold. And this is what the inside cover looks like. So there are more books in the Dune series, but this is just the first book. The font is not as large as Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but much larger than the Austin or the Sherlock Holmes, and um, much, much larger than the Shakespeare. I find this 
font maybe slightly smaller than your average hardback book or about the same as your average hardback book. I find it incredibly comfortable to read. It's much larger than the Austin. Um, the Austin I find easy to read as well, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> so I just, just in case people have difficulty reading smaller, this I don't think would bother you at all. It's a beautiful edition. I haven't read it yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, we made it to the last one. <laughs> this is Michael Crichton, Jurassic Park and, Lost World, and The Lost World. Um, Jurassic Park and its sequel, The Lost World, are bound together in this volume. This is the front, the spine, and the back. And this one is gilded in silver. And this is what the inside cover looks like. And then in here is that. The font in this is quite large. Um, I'd say definitely the size of the largest font I've seen in a hardcover book. And it's quite easy to read. Um, I suppose since just the two books are in here. Um, but this, this font is definitely good. So I'm not sure what else to say about it. I find this to be a beautiful edition and I've read Crichton's Timeline but I haven't read Jurassic Park or the Lost World yet so that's why I really wanted to get this. Um, also, when I got a lot of these they were on a great sale. Normally they're $18 but I got half of them for $10 and half of them for $18 when I got some of these, about 7 or 8 of them. So I got them in a good sale, but I think that normally they are $18. Some of them are $22.50. I know that um, the Crichton and Adams, those were $22.50, I think. But uh, when I got them, I got them on a good sale. I feel like these sales come somewhat frequently, so it could be a good idea to wait to get yours when there is a sale, but also sometimes they go out of print and they can be much more expensive. So I found that sometimes when they're out of print and not offered on their website, you can find them on eBay, but sometimes on eBay the prices will be hiked up a lot. Um, so they might try to sell it to you for $30 or, for example, one of these which I would love to have is the Narnia bounded to one edition and it's beautiful. But that, <laughs> that has been out of print for a while and it goes for 900 something dollars last time I checked. So some of the ones that are out of print are going to be driven up by the demand. So you might not be able to get them. But some of them that are out of print you can find on eBay. And then also they're coming up with new editions as well. So if you see an edition that you don't like as well, it's possible that they would eventually in a year or two come up with a new one. For example, this edition of The War of the Worlds is not the one that I think is currently on their website. The one on their website currently I do not like how it looks as well. But um, so that is one thing to keep in mind is that the ones that are currently in print might not be available for constantly for the next couple of years but also there might be new ones coming out so I would just keep that in mind when you are thinking about buying these. So I'm going to wrap this up as it has been a very long video but I hope that was helpful to you Vienna and anyone else who is interested in these. Um, I tried to show it the best I could. I know that the font is kind of hard to see on the video but hopefully it was helpful and let me know if you have any questions about any of these and I can make another video or answer them in your questions or anything like that. So yeah, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye!